Hi everybody, welcome to Push Luck Video. My name is Eric, and today we'll be looking at Murano. Murano is a 2 to 4 player game by Mayfair Games, and it is published in 2014. This is by the dynamic duo, designer duo of Inca and Marcus Brand, who also brought you many other games in the past and some of my favorite games like Village and the Village series and my Village as well. So uh, this is a 2 to 4 player game, plays about 60 to 75 minutes or so and it's an action selection rondal with a bit of area control and but mostly is to have end game scoring as well. So um, players will be manipulating the rondal which is actually just around the board itself and then through that do actions which will allow them to build buildings, uh, uh, cr create glass, uh, sell goods to customers and but ultimately they want to score points and that is done by placing their rondella uh, at uh, sorry pla placing their gondolier at uh, specific islands and then using their end game scoring character cards to give them points at the end of the game. So uh, let's take a look at the components of the game, uh, how to play the game and what I think about the game. Alright so this is what you see in uh, Murano, there's a very big board uh, and there are different areas on the board where you can later on build uh, roads and build buildings. There's also this whole interesting track around it, which is actually the action track, action selection track, and it's a, you can think of it as a big rondel. All right. Uh, then there are all these little boats around uh, on the board itself. There's also one red boat. All right. But at the start of the game, it doesn't matter where you place the boats, be it the red boat, red boats or the black boats. Um, this is the area where you can put all the tiles that are available in the game. I did not put every tile there, I'm just showing you an example. And then each player will also have a whole bunch of um, uh, pawns. Alright, these are the gondoliers and then also cubes. So these cubes are used to denote the buildings that belong to you. Alright. Uh, there's also uh, a few character cards here, right? So these are the character cards. These are very important because they will, uh, these are all end game scoring cards, right? These are very important because they will help you to score points, which will allow you to win the game. <coughs> there's also uh, special building cards, all right? Special building cards are permanent powers that will give you benefits throughout the entire game. How to active, all right? And that's it. That's all there is to it. And also there's a bag, a little bag of. Uh, gems so you can see that these are the gems all right these are the glass when you produce glass and these are the gems that re represent glass all right and that's it that's all there is to the, the components of the game uh typical uh, uh mainfair game uh components is is functional is good uh thick tiles the only problem is if you flip on the other side of the board this is a four player board if you flip on the other side of the board to play uh two or three players the the way that it's stuck the the map on is not very well done so um that is the only knock i would say against the components all right so that's it uh so how do you play the game itself now it's very simple during your turn you can either pass all right or you choose one of the boats to move all right, and then you do the action where the boat ends up with so what do i mean by that so you see all these are actions around the board so i can choose any one of the boat during my turn to move let's say i move this i can move this to here or to here now where the boat ends i'll get to do the action itself so i'll be doing this action once i've done the action that's it that's my turn and the next player will go all right so we will keep doing this until the end of the game is triggered how does the end of the game uh, trigger is when two different stacks of tiles have been emptied and then whoever triggers that Right, will trigger the game end. That will be that person's final turn. Then each other player will have one final turn, and then we count points. And whoever has the most points then will win the game. So uh, the action is the most important thing. Now, one thing about the action selection, you can move several boats. The first boat you move is, is free. Subsequent boats that you move will need, will cost you one coin. So for example, if I move this here and I move this other boat here, for example, because initially the boat was like this. And I want to do this action, but I need to move this boat away so that I can then move another boat to this action to do to be able to perform this action. So I can move this boat away anywhere I want, then I move this here. So I need to pay one coin because I move one one boat to do so. Then I'll be able to do this action right now. All right. So, uh, so that's the the main mechanism. So let's go through the different actions that are available. Now I will detach my camera so you can see the actions clearly. All right. So, um. First action, this is the 
the glass uh, factory action. So you are paying one coin to take uh, one glass factory tile. So this is the glass factory tile. All the glass factory tiles are the same, so it doesn't matter which one you take. You just take one from the top and put it in front of you. All right. These are the these are building tiles. All right. So when you get them, you do not build them in immediately. Only when you go to the build action can you build them. So this is the glass factory. All all them are the same. This is the special buildings. All all them are the same. These are shop houses. Now they are special because they are is in their uh, hidden because they are different so they they produce different types of goods so this produce uh, black goods this produce blue goods this is the palace bu uh, palace building tile so they also are hidden because they are different so uh, they have different number of crests on the other side of the, of the board now for the special buildings and the palaces uh, no one owns them so once they build on a board you do not put your cube on them but for the shop and for the glass when you build on a board then there's this little square that you can see here you can now put your cube on it like so okay to claim that is your own then these are the road tiles so the road tiles are different some of them are empty roads some of them have customers so these are customers so for example for this case th this road tile has a red and a black customer on it so when you build you'll be placing uh for this cobblestone this is where you put your road tiles so this is where you put road tiles now when you build a building you need to connect it to a road so if you see clearly you can see that this is like there's a little road here so when you place it you place it like so all right so uh and you place it only in all these empty uh, darkened areas all right so that's uh all the building tiles so let's go to go back to the actions again sorry i jumped the gun a bit so this this is the you get one coin you get one green tile all right this is for you uh, there'll be a whole stack of gondol gondoliers here. We start with five. There'll be two of gondoliers here. So this allows you to pay three coins to claim one gondolier from here back into your area to be able to use. Or you can sell one gondolier, put the gondolier here, and you get three coins. All right, coin is very important in the game because it allows you to do a lot of other things. Okay, the next one is here. All right, this allows you to pay one coin to to get one credit card. So when you get credit cards, you take three and choose one. Now, if you're getting your second credit card, you need to pay two coins. If you're getting your third credit card, you pay three coins. If you're getting your fourth, you pay four coins, and so on and so forth. So, what do the credit cards do? As I mentioned, uh, they are there for your endgame scoring. All right. I will, I will show you the different credit, some of the credit cards available. For example, in this case, uh, uh, if if you have at least three of your, uh, you. You receive 10 VP if you have at least three buildings on San Clara at San Stefano. So that would be here. Alright. So if you have at least three buildings in this particular island, right, then you score 10 VP. Right. Now you can you will not immediately score it. You still need to be able to put your gondolier on this island. So I explain about the end game scoring later on. Alright, but this is how you get character cards which will give you end game scoring points. Next is this building ability. So you can build one to three things uh, of any uh, glass, shop, palace, special building, or roads. Roads are free and you only can get them during this action. Right, so you can build any of them and you can build anywhere that you want. Right, once If you build a glass, you get one point. If you build a shop, you get two points. If you build a palace, you get three points. If you build a special building, you get special cards. So this is how you can get a special cards. You will draw three. Same as the character cards, you draw three and choose one, and then you put you reveal it in front of you. So, for example, if I choose this, I can now use red beads in place of blue beads and vice versa. If I choose this, I may choose from five cards when recruiting characters, so I have more options in this way. So, these are permanent character cards. Special cards are permanent abilities that give you uh, certain benefits as you play the game. This allows you to take two, uh, pay two coins to take the topmost shop shop a uh, tile or you can pay four coins and you can look through the entire stack to choose the one that you want and then put the rest back in so as you can see uh, it's quite important to have money because it gives you more options and more uh, opportunities next you are selling to customers now you choose one island and you can sell goods so the blue shops will sell to the blue customers red shops will sell to red customers and so on and so forth uh, you will sell to all customers that's connected to the road so for example if this road this road right, has a lot of customers here. Your one shop, your my one shop here can sell to all the custom all the blue customers that are in this road here. Alright, and you get one coin for each customer that you sell to. You can only sell at most uh one you can only activate at most one blue shop, one red shop, and one uh black shop. Alright, then you can you can get coins based on that. Right. 
So next, uh, all these actions are also available on the opposite side. Most of these actions are available on the opposite side, except for some actions which are only one. For example, the gondola action has only one of them on, on the entire board. Alright, uh, next, you can also do the same as a palace. So you spend two coins to get the topmost palace, or you spend four coins to look through the entire palace deck, choose the tile that you want, and then shuffle the rest. All right. This you pay two coins to put a gondolier onto anywhere on the board that has your own color space, or you can pay five coins to put a gondolier any other color space. So for example, if I want to score this particular island later on, I can spend two coins to put my gray on the gray space itself. If I pay five coins, I can put it anywhere you want. This is very interesting because it it, it secures that you will have be able to score up a, a character card in this particular area. Right, so this gondola touches gondola touches this pier, so you can score a credit card for this particular island. All right, you can also screw your neighbors by paying five and put anywhere you want. So you can effectively you can effectively block them. All right, what other tiles there are actions there? Are? Okay, this this is a different action. Let me move to the other side. All right, so this action allows you to produce glass. So when you produce glass, you can choose any number of factories on the entire board that you want, right? You need to pay 2 VP per glass factory that you activate. Uh, if you don't have enough VP, you cannot activate the factory. So you must always have enough VP to activate. Uh, every player will start at 5 VP at the start of the game. Now for each factory you activate, you draw one bead from the back. Right? Then at the end of that uh, turn, you can decide to sell uh, beads. So if you sell one color bead, it's 5 coins. You get 5 coins. If you sell 2 of the same color beads, you get 12 coins. If you sell three of the same color beads, you get 20 coins. Right, so that's a very good way of getting a lot of coins. You can only sell one color at a turn. Right, that means you cannot sell two or the same colors. Uh, two or three different colors. All right? And so that's all the action that is available on the board itself. All right, so how do you do the end game scoring? So uh, let me go back to my gondolier. So in this case, all right, uh, I wanted to put mine here because I had this card where if I had at least three of the same buildings uh, uh, three sorry three buildings uh on it was this one sorry three same buildings on uh San Chero and San Stefano I will get ten points. So in this case in turn order later on beginning the player who ended the game alright they'll review each credit card and resolve the gondolier. So if I want to do this, all right, I'll move my gondolier to the middle of the island to indicate that I'm scoring now. I'll show the card that I want to score. And if I meet the objective, I'll score the points. Then I'll discard the card and I can discard the gondolier. All right, so for each gondolier that you have on the board, this is how you score points. So it's very important during throughout the game to put gondoliers because this will indicate a potential point scoring opportunity for you. If you have no gondoliers on the board, gondoliers on the board, that would mean that that's it, you there's no more scoring for you at the end of the game. Right, so it's very important to have some character cards that will give you points because they do give you a lot of points, especially the cards which will give you gems. All right, because for example, in this case, you can trade in three gems for seven points each. So this card itself, if you manage to do it correctly, you get twenty-one points just from this card itself. All right, and yeah, so that's it. That's uh, all the game rules. So let's go to my thoughts about the game uh, of Murano. So what do you think of Murano? I think the pair of Inca's and Ma Inca and Marcus brand has done it again. Uh, this is another hit. Uh, I really like it. There's, the action selection is pretty clever. There are opportunities where you can screw your neighbors uh, when you want to. Uh, you know that your neighbors wants to do a particular build action, for example, and you know that there's only one more build action or, or it's all clogged up. You can always move the ship such that you clog up the entire area and your opponent, if they really want to do that particular action, because, like, for example, to create glass. Uh, action space, there's only one of them on the entire board. If you know that your opponent wants to do that, you can clog up the entire area such that they'll need to spend money to move all the boats away so that they can then move a boat there to do the action. So there's a lot of interaction involved. There's also, your, your credit cards are all secret at the beginning, uh, when you get them. So you if you can roughly guess what your opponents are trying to go for, you can screw them up. You, by placing the gondolier, gondolier on the particular island, you know that your opponent is going to score there. So you you can roughly guess what the opponent, if you play uh, uh, well enough, long enough, you will roughly know what the different characters are available. So if you can guess what your opponent is aiming for, you can then try to screw with your neighbor. So knowing when to put your 
uh, candelias down to enable you to score points is important because put too early, players now can focus on the island and try to mess with you to screw up your point scoring. Uh, if you put too late, other players may decide to spend the five coins to then take your space, and then you need to then spy another five coins just to put on a space and any any available space uh, just to be able to score the points and end on the game. So uh, there's a lot of uh, interaction amongst players, and this plan this planning of on what you want to do is also very interesting because all the available actions are visible on the board. You can see, you can plan, and you can do make do it in such a way that you can ensure that other opponents are paying a lot more just to do that particular action. Um, you cannot be too greedy as well because if you, you spend a lot of money to get these particular action cards, they may not give you a lot of benefits uh, at the start. Um, there's a lot of replayability as well because some of the credit cards are not available at the start of the game. They are discarded at the, at the game. Uh, the special cards, you also do not know what you will get. So there's a bit of a randomness there uh, that might, might be good, might not be good for some players because if I get good combination of uh, special cards and, and character cards, I may be able to score a lot of points. Uh, but majority of the scoring will come at the end of the game. You'll be reviewing, reviewing, you see whether you actually beat opponents or not. So that's quite kind of interesting. So, so I know that uh, it's been some time, well it's been actually only one year or so that Murana has came out. Uh, but I've been a bit slow in picking it up, but I'm glad I picked it up and I'll definitely recommend uh, Murano to everyone out there. So uh, it's definitely recommended and thank you for watching the video.